I'm YC. Uh, I've been making music videos for the better part of 10 years now, and I think I've really just gotten to a point where I'm focusing on my cinematography and trying to up my game. So these are a couple of tips that you can implement today without any additional gear. None of it is gimmicky, and none of it's law either. It's going to be some things that you see out in the world that is visually pleasing to you and is actually great cinematography that does not align with what I'm about to say. These are just a couple of things to think about that you might not have thought about, all right? So let's hop straight into it. The first tip is keep your sky. For me personally, when I look at a shot and I see that the sky takes up a large part of the frame and that sky is completely blown out, to me, that's like an instantaneous indication that whoever's filming this doesn't really pay attention to cinematography. And I guess that's kind of harsh to say, but I think that if you look at a frame and a large part of it is the sky and it's completely blown out in white, it's not only very distracting, you look at it, it's just white. It's so much detail gone, but as a viewer, you also don't really get to feel the environment. You don't get to see what the weather was like. You don't get to feel the emotion in the clouds. Like these are really important things when it comes to cinematography. And whenever you're looking at your favorite films, in movie theaters or on the screen in your living room or you're looking at your favorite Netflix show. These are things that they're thinking about. And most of the time, the exposure throughout the shot is consistent enough to have that detail in the sky. Now, I understand that we film on mirrorless cameras. Some of us are filming on our phones, which actually does have incredible uh, dynamic range with this software. But these devices can be very hard for us to keep the exposure in the sky. And you're gonna be in instances like this right here, like in my office where you're not gonna have powerful enough lights inside of the house to expose for the window. And I think in that case, it's cool to just blow it out. But these are two things that you can do to make sure that you keep your sky exposure wise. The first one is just silhouette your subject out. If you're filming a music video, if you're filming a short film or like a feature film even, if you told the story right, we're gonna know who the subject is. And in a music video, we also know who the subject is. We don't need to see their face at every single second of the project. So give the viewer credit. We're smart. We understand what's happening. We don't need to see their face. Keep the sky, silhouette them out. Or another thing you can do is you can just adjust where the sun is in the frame. It doesn't matter what camera you're using. If you shoot your camera directly at the sun, it's not going to be able to keep that detail in the sky. So just think about either waiting until the sun moves to a different part of the sky or the frame, or just shifting the frame a little bit to have the sun off to the side where it can light the side of your subject. We can see a little bit of their facial expression and we can keep that detail in the sky. So keeping the sky is gonna completely up your cinematography to another level. It's something so simple, but when it's blown out, we don't have any detail. It just makes it so the viewer can't understand what's happening in the scene. We're losing a lot of detail. And overall, I think it's a distracting thing. The second tip is gonna be composure shots using a grid. Now, I film with the grid on my camera at all times. I understand it's annoying to look at sometimes, but it makes it so simple for me to frame up a shot. All I gotta do is look at this grid, place my subject at one of these points on the grid, and it's gonna look good 99% of the time. Composition in itself is just gonna do a lot for your shots. It's Things you can do beyond using this grid, like thinking about symmetry in a shot or thinking about the leading lines that you see in the scene. All of these things combined is gonna make your shot look so much freaking better. So above just using a grid of thirds, analyze your scene. Understand what is too busy in the scene, where you can place your subject in the shot so that they have enough room to be the subject of the shot and then not be too busy around them. Combine that with the grid, combine that with symmetry, combine that with leading lines you're gonna get the most aesthetically pleasing shot. Just thinking about composition as a whole is gonna completely level up your cinematography and not going into it from a random standpoint. I used to just use my gimbal all the time and I would just try to get the most amount of motion, not even think about where my subject is in a shot. I think about if their head's getting cut off. I think about if my composition is consistent throughout the frame. I'm just running in, I'm flipping the gimbal around, I'm just doing all kind of crazy stuff. But now at this current point in my career, I'm thinking a lot more about composition and that in itself is just up in my cinematography a lot. The third tip is color as much as you can before you even begin shooting. Now, it's not a coincidence that your favorite movies and your favorite Netflix shows all have a cohesive color palette or a color palette that just looks so aesthetically pleasing. Everything down to the set design, everything down to the wardrobe, everything down to the props. These are all things that they're thinking about before they even begin shooting. And if you think about this before you begin shooting, it's gonna not only make your shots so much better, but it's gonna make your life a lot easier when it comes to doing the color grading in post. Everybody talks about filming and log, which is not a bad thing. You 
obviously want to film a log to give yourself enough latitude to be able to adjust colors and posts. But if you think about the outfit color that your subject's going to be wearing in comparison to the background and try to create some sort of color contrast between these two things before you even get the post, you're going to have to do a lot less when it comes to color grading. Instead of going for a teal and orange color grade, you can have the subject wear a teal and you can have the background be a uh, freaking wheat field. And then you already have this color scheme going and you don't have to go super crazy and color grading. And then you don't have to have the image break down because you're trying to change something that's not teal to teal and you want it super saturated. It's just gonna make it so much easier if you think about these things beforehand. So for me, whenever I'm shooting a music video, if I know I'm gonna be shooting on a primarily blue background, I'm gonna have the subject wear something that is a little bit warmer. If I want a teal and red color scheme, I'm gonna make sure the outfit's red and then I'm gonna use the teal light. These are things that pro cinematographers really think about before they even get to shooting. Think about the color and think about how much coloring you could do before you even begin shooting. It's gonna make your life so much easier. The next tip is gonna be layering. Now, layering with lighting and also just layering in general is gonna make your cinematography so much better. Layering with lighting is having alternating tones within the lighting of your subject. So if you film on the shadow side of your subject, typically what you're gonna see is you're gonna see bright, dark, then you're gonna see bright and then dark. And if you continue this layering concept, you're gonna continue to see light, dark, and you're gonna have these patterns alternating. This is how you get the most dynamic looking shots. It's really easy to do when you film on the shadow side of your subject because you're automatically gonna have that alternating color palette where it's bright, then dark, then bright again. But when it comes to just layering in general, foreground, midground, and background, if you think about these concepts for your shots when you're filming them, it's gonna make your shots so much more dynamic. It's gonna be so much more dynamic than you just having this shot right here where I'm the subject of the shot and I'm in focus and the background is blurred out. It's cool, I'm separated, but if it was another layer before me, like right here, and then me, and then the background, it's just gonna make the shot feel so much more dynamic. So think about layering. I tend to think about layering a lot whenever I'm using a slider because you really can't tell that a subject is moving if you don't have foreground. So not only does layering make your shots look more dynamic, but it also exaggerates movement. When you have a foreground object moving simultaneously with the subject and the background, it just makes the movement of a shot look so much more solid. So thinking about layering is something that uh, ups your cinematography game a lot. And the last and final tip that I think is so freaking important is choosing the right stabilizer. When I got my Ronin M a couple years ago, I would literally shoot everything on it. It doesn't matter what I was doing. It doesn't matter if I'm filming a close-up or super wide or if I'm trying to focus on something in a story-based music video. I'm using a Ronin for everything and that just isn't really the right play. Stabilizers are tools and they're meant to be used for specific sorts of shots and thinking about the right stabilizer for the right shot is going to up your cinematography game to a whole nother level. It's going to be shots where you have your subject simultaneously moving through a bunch of different scenarios and scenes and you're going to want to use a gimbal for that but it's going to be shots where you just want a static frame and you just want people to focus on the subject and the shot and then moving through it. This is going to be the best for using a tripod or it's going to be shots where you have your subject moving and you want to show that they're not in the right mindset. They're in a rocky mindset. They're angry. It's a lot happening. And you might want to shoot handheld for those shots or it's going to be shots where you slowly want to emphasize something. And this is going to be best done by using a slider or a dolly. So just figuring out the sole intent of a shot and choosing the right stabilizer for it is going to make your cinematography so much better. I'm telling you. But yeah, that's that. Those are my tips. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop it a like. But I'm out, y'all. Peace. Thank you.